I've got this old wheel from the junk pile. You can see it's just spinning around. It still works, but it's a bit hit and miss when you. And I would, normally wouldn't worry about doing anything with this, but just for the sake of the exercise, I'll take it out and uh, pull it apart and show you how it works. It's a bit windy out here, but it's the spline tool. Because you need there's a spline in there. Like that. It undoes the same direction as the freewheel. They can be they can be quite tight like this one is. <clears throat> Go and get some more leverage. I'll be back. And that's it. So there's the thread that it screwed onto on the hub and the thread inside the, the freewheel. Okay, so there it is. You can see the sp splines in there for the spline tool that went in there. And there's the thread on the back that it screws onto the hub. It's quite different to a cassette type arrangement. Now to get it apart, but you've got to unscrew this ring here using these two holes. Now I don't have the proper tool for that, so I'm going to have to make something up. So I'm going to be a bit of a butcher and try and tap it around with a center punch. I don't think it's going to work. It doesn't work quickly, like with a bit of effort, it's probably not going to work. Put a clamp on this spanner. I think I'm batching the wrong way. That's not going to help. It does help when you turn it the right way. That comes out like that. So there's that little, it's got a much thinner, um, I do you call that, one of the little bearings. That's the cone. And then all the other ball bearings are in there. So there's the ball bearings. them all in there. There are all the bearing, ball bearings in the top. One, two, three, four. Seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one. 29, 30, 31. That's a strange number. Yeah, I'm going to put those in here. Give it a bit of a clean off, that's just petrol. Probably shouldn't use petrol, but I am. Put this little ring in, this looks a bit delicate, this, so maybe careful about that. The guts of it, whatever you want to call it, we'll just push out. Try and catch the bearings. Just in case there's a different number in the one side to the other. So 39, 1, 10, 20, 39. Well, they can go in the petrol. A bit of 
to clean off. So now this, you can see here, you can see the sawtooth type ratchet bits in there. There's probably a name for that, but this is one solid thing. There's no moving parts left. I'll sit there for a minute. And here's the poles. You can see how they're sticky. It comes up, but then doesn't really spring up and down. It sort of does. I'll exercise it a bit. See what this side's like. Oh, it's a bit better. The hell down with these springs, and then a little divot over there. So they're almost not serviceable, but you can get the paws out. Good luck trying to find new ones. So as I showed you before, this sits in there like that. So interestingly, this is the other one, the old the five speed. This is a this is a seven, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. You can see the the design is different. This one you can see the, the ratchet top section really close to or right next to the outer bearing. This one's in quite a way, it's down in there, the outer bearing's down there. So it's quite a different design. Obviously it's got to be deeper because of the extra gear. But you sort of can't really see that. If you've got a keen eye you can see that the spacing between a, a five speed free wheel on a seven speed free wheel that the cogs are spaced together closer and they're a bit narrower that's why you can't use a five speed chain on a seven speed bike no you probably can't use a uh, seven speed on a five speed either because the chain won't fit on fit over here It'd be too narrow so best to get it right now that go over in the junk pile this can go in the petrol Long. You know the petrol too. It's got to be gentle when you're cleaning because it flicks petrol and uh, grease everywhere if you're not careful. That's why I like to have a nice deep ice cream container. Where is it? Is it? Here it is. That's the top one. You see, still on this um, free hub body, yeah, there's two more spaces. There's a, another little fine one and a bigger, bigger one. So the bigger one goes on first, the thicker one, and then the thin one. I'll label those in a minute. This one doesn't come off by the feel of it. Yes, it does. So the even bigger one goes on. So I'll, before I forget, I'll label that. So that's one, two, three, four. And that's the outer. Singapore. Shimano Singapore. V. VC. Yeah, VC. It's had a bit of use. You can see how the... Um, the coating's worn off the, the cone, so it's had a bit of use. That wheel, all that free. Probably the original, no doubt it's the original um, free wheel that was on the bike. I can't remember where that wheel came from. It was probably a bike I found on Hard Rubbish. And I'm only doing this to show people what, uh, how they work. I've got no particular use at this moment for a, um, a free hub. So that's, you know, still, you can, probably can't feel it, but I can feel it still a bit gritty in there. You can get these things out. I've done it before. Like that. And then 
the pawn pops out. There we go. All yeah. right, so this has been sitting in the ew, sitting in the petrol for a day. Now, yeah, of course, in here is the ball bearings, but I'm a smart fella. And I listened to some advice from someone, and I've got a sieve. So I'm going to sieve out the sieve out the ball bearings. Get all that muck in there. I'll get the ball bearings out without too much of a crack. Well, I think that's it. Put some uh, vinegar. I got this off a, uh, a YouTube channel, Gary's Projects it's called. I'll put a link in the description. You can use metho as well for the final wash, kerosene maybe. What am I saying? Vinegar seems more environmentally friendly. It's probably a bit cheaper too. Alright, so I'm going to put them all in this kitchen paper. A bit fiddly. Okay, now to put the bearings in, you've got to keep in mind that one lot of bearings have to go in there, which is the 39. So they're going to sit in between those two. And the other ones have to go down in there, the 31. So what I'll do is I'll put, I'll carefully put a little bit of grease around that inside of there. So count out 31, oh, sorry, the inside's 39, two, three. Thirty-nine, so this should here be thirty-one. Okay, so I'll just use high temperature wheel bearing grease. Some people might say this is too much. Maybe it is. Now, what I'll also do is I'll put very even less on the actual ratchet part run around my finger and then wipe it off it's just to provide some lubrication on the poles when the poles set up against it so now the 39 on the outside inside i should say just sit them in like this use the grease to stick them on once you sort of get the hang of it it's not rocket science you just keep doing it Okay, that's it's normal for them to be a, um, a gap. The bearings aren't usually all packed in really tight. There's normally bits of, a few gaps. So that's okay. Now what I will do is put the smallest amount of grease in under there. Like that. The same on this side. That's just because when these things rock, they're actually pivoting on the underneath the side there. And wipe off the excess.
Okay, so before I put this back in, put these on in the order they came off. So one, two, three, and four. We'll put a very, very fine smearing of grease around there. That's what's the uh, it's the thread that the cone is going to go onto. Carefully poke that in there. Okay, got it right first time. So that. Certainly not loud like some of them. You can feel the running on the bearings. Keeping in mind that if you pick this up, turn this upside down, it'll fall out. So put it down carefully. If you're really paranoid, get some pointy pliers and put it down like that. And then do the same thing. Run a bit of small amount of grease down there too much I'm not one for be too scared of a bit of grease um, some people say you shouldn't use any or just a really ultra th fine amount. I just find it's, it's almost impossible to get the bearings in unless you use some. Oops. One nearly got away. A needle here. You have to make sure they're sitting in the in the cup area. Okay, so that's them all packed in. Try and pick it up. Bit of a closer look so you can see the bearings all sitting around the outside so when this cone screws in it will go down either side of the bearings and the inside of the bearings now just push this little spacer down this little shim I just wanted to poke up all right now let's do this again backwards thread remember so that's it It has to go in from the back. And I've got no way of holding it. The old vice grips to the rescue. There we go. Should be the cone and the shims pushing on the body so it shouldn't actually bind it up i won't push it too far just in case okay beautiful i don't know if you can see that you certainly can't hear it so um it's not going to be noisy. Maybe I'll put a little bit too much grease in there. But it is grabbing. And it, um, it'll be fine to put on a bike one day. I really did it just to show people how it's done. Uh, if I did it again, I'd probably put less grease in the poles.
you can just hear it. Uh, put less grease in the pulps, probably, if I did it again. And if I did lots of them, if I did them on a regular basis, I'd either buy a tool, like a two-pronged type tool to put in there and turn it around, or I'd make one up somehow. I think tapping it with a center punch is okay. Um, but it's probably not what you really should be doing. This is some footage of a five-speed freewheel. You can see a bit clearer how the poles and ratchet work. As it turns, you can see that pole there is locked into that little spot. And interestingly, this one's in the middle. So you're only ever transferring power through one pole at a time. And then when it turns a bit more, you free wheel for a bit and it locks in there. It's on the other side. So when you're free wheeling, it's like that. When you pedal, bang. In that case, this one locked in there.